Webster, you've got the floor. Let's get into the Limbaugh situation first. Well, Rush Limbaugh is an, I, I would call him an agent of the Mount Pelerin Society, and specifically of one of the attendees of the Mount Society, and that was uh, William F. Buckley Jr., the right wing CIA. And if you remember when, when William F. Buckley, the National Review guy, died, uh, Limbaugh was in mourning for several weeks, and he went into great detail about how Mr. Buckley made me what I am today, and he introduced me to Henry Kissinger, and he made me great, and so forth. So um, this is uh, obviously a, a very dubious character. Now, the problem that Limbaugh faces, if, you, if you've had these, these, the recent uh, uh, Tea Party march on September 12th, and then the, uh, the slightly smaller one that took place recently, Limbaugh is concerned to keep that within the Republican Party. Uh, a lot of people were calling Limbaugh and Hannity, for that matter, and saying, we want a third party, we're sick of both parties, the Republicans are just as bad as the Democrats, a plague on both your houses, let's build towards a third party. And you could hear Limbaugh scrambling, saying, no, 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 that's uh, just another recipe to make the Democrats stronger. So what he's So is do... Hannity. Hannity saying the same thing every day on his TV show, stay with the Republicans. So now they have to act like they're us to try to keep their people. Yes, they've, they've, they've got to radicalize themselves. And, of course, in order to have a more radical and a more coherent analysis, where better to go than to you? And therefore, they, they bring this up. So he's, he's essentially tacking a little bit in a radical, anti-establishment, anti-globalist direction to get some street creds. Because otherwise, a lot of these uh, Tea Party people listen to him and they say, what? You're for free trade? You're, uh, you know, you're a warmonger? You're supporting the Republicans? You, you know, you were a lapdog for Bush? You discovered deficits uh, with, with Obama, but back in the day of Bush, it was... Cheney telling us that deficits don't matter, that Reagan had proved that deficits don't matter. So I think it's, it's that. It's a purely opportunistic, demagogic thing, but it's also a, a tribute to the fact that your influence is growing. Webster, the dollar is plunging, as you predicted. I was eating when you were talking. I'm here on TV with a mouthful of food. Take me off there, guys. Um, Webster, you were predicting this a very long time ago. Now the dollar has plunged to record lows. Gold is exploding and soaring to new highs. Uh, will you explain to people what's happening and, and, and what this is going to do to them if we don't reverse the tide and, and, and take control of this political system? Well, we just had Secretary Geithner, right? Tiny Tim was testifying in the Congress today. And what, of course, he has done, along with Summers and Volcker and Bernanke, is that they've kept the U.S. interest rates at zero. You can borrow if you're a bank, not, not a person like us. But if you're a bank, you can borrow at zero percent from the Federal Reserve. And what they've done with that is create something called the dollar carry trade. You borrow at zero percent from the Fed, and then you take that to some extremely risky speculative market, be it in Poland or Ukraine or Turkey or uh, Indonesia, wherever it is, whatever emerging market is the hottest. You take it there and you speculate like mad. But it's, every time you do that, that puts a downward pressure on the dollar because somebody's borrowing dollars and then selling them to get this other currency. So the dollar goes down, down, down. Now, there are other factors working, right? The fact that they've put out this $24 trillion uh, bailout from the Treasury, the Fed, and the FDIC, that's also playing a role. So we've now reached a very dangerous point. Uh, there are two things that could happen. One would be a dollar panic out there in the world that is coming out of uh, Kuala Lumpur or uh, someplace in Africa or someplace in Latin America. Somebody decides that they're a little bit heavy on dollars and they want to lighten up, and that leads to some kind of a, of a panic, or a military event could lead to a panic, or if Obama catches the flu, that could lead to a panic. It has d done so in, in the not-so-distant past. So that's one way. You could get a, a kind of panic coming out of the world. The other thing is there are treasury auctions. Uh, next week there's going to be $118 billion of five- and seven-year treasury paper put on the market. Now, what happens if people don't buy those, if there are not bids enough for all of it, or above all, if, if the interest rate jumps way up and, uh, and that turns out to be a disaster? Now, that's not hypothetical. That happened to the British back in March of this year. The British had a guilt auction. G-I-L-T, right, the British Treasury paper, and they, they couldn't sell all of it. And people said at that point, well, does this mean that Great Britain is bankrupt? So 
The obvious way to get out of this would be to raise the interest rates, which Bernanke could do. But if he raises the interest rates to attract hot money back into the dollar... In fact, he was under pressure, as you know, at a conference on Monday... And in a speech, he said, look, I'm not worried about the dollar dropping. I'm worried about interest rates, and I'm going to keep them low. They're doing that so they can continue the speculative uh, carry trade, aren't they? Yes, but of course, he does have to worry about the dollar, and he really does, right? He's talking through his hat, as these characters always do. Uh, they're very concerned about the dollar, and they know that if the dollar keeps going, we might get into one of these irreversible mudslides where it just starts going down, and then it, there's nothing they can do. Uh, to, to get out of it. In other words, a worldwide dollar panic, and that would lead then to hyperinflation. It's yeah, tell you... people, boil it down in layman's terms. Well, we know the leadership we have. We know they're not going to listen to your solutions. So what is going to unfold, Webster? Well, in terms of the hyperinflation, if the dollar goes down 20 or 30 percent, then remember, everything in this country is imported. This is a deindustrialized rubble field of a post-industrial society that we have here. So everything is imported, and if the dollar goes down, that means the prices on all those imports go up. So that gets you into the realm of, of hyperinflation. Now, here's what I think they, they're going to try to do. The one uh, way to get out of that bind, right, in other words, it's either going to be a 0% rate and the dollar goes down, 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 or raise the interest rates and you, you collapse the stock market and you get a panic in a different way. The only way out of that is some kind of outside event. Now, remember, 1973-74, we had a fake oil crisis, which was designed to soak up the dollars in the world and stabilize the dollar. That was done by Kissinger with the Six-Day War. Later on in 79, when Brzezinski brought down the Shah and installed Khomeini, we had another oil crisis. So 73, 74, 79, I think that's somehow the model for what might occur right now. In other words, you look Wasn't at the, the oil run-up, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt, but wasn't the oil run-up of a year and a half, two years ago, engineered as well to soak up dollars? Yes, and that, but of course that was the speculative activity of Goldman Sachs and, and Morgan Stanley. In other words, that's the London ICE exchange, and they're, they're trying to do that again, and the price of, of oil is indeed creeping up, maybe not today, but, but pretty much uh, continuously. Okay, so finish the point I interrupted. The, the, the thing now is uh, Wall Street believes that if some shocking, spectacular event, right, a false flag, a Gulf of Tonkin, a war in some strategically critical area, or a, some kind of big scare, uh, many types of things would do. They think that there's the flight to safe haven, the flight to safety, and they believe still that if the world seems to be descending into chaos, hot money will fly to New York, and that would then prop up the dollar in some at least short to medium term way. And therefore, you have to look at what that might be. Now, I was on Russia Today yesterday, and they're asking me about this bomb in Peshawar, Pakistan, a couple of weeks ago, where the Taliban, the Pakistani Taliban, are, are saying that they didn't do this, and that this was done by the U.S., the CIA, and specifically Blackwater. And we had a, a couple of weeks also, we had this uh, Baluchistan bomb, where the Iranians said that the CIA did that one, too. So you look at Pakistan... Pakistan is now pretty much in a full-scale civil war. The Pakistani army has been winning in South Waziristan, but I don't know if they're winning everywhere. And generally, the level of fighting is increasing. And you've got to remember that the Taliban in Pakistan are a pure proxy of the U.S. They're run pretty much by the CIA, or they're directed and, and used. They're an asset of the CIA. So we have a funny situation in Pakistan. The Chinese are supporting the central government in Islamabad, and the U.S. is supporting any force that wants to wage civil war against the Pakistani government. Now, suppose the Taliban do what uh, these neocons have been talking about for so many years. They get their hands on some of those Pakistani nukes, whether they can use them or not. That might be the kind of great fear, the shock out in the world that would do it. Another possibility, there's a civil war going on in Yemen. And in this civil war, the Iranians are on one side and the Saudis are on the other side. The Iranians are backing a rebel group and the Saudis, I guess, are backing the, the government of Yemen, whatever that is. And there have been clashes. There have been also incidents on the, on the water in the Persian Gulf, Arabian Gulf, where, where uh, the Saudis and the Iranians have clashed. Suppose you had military tension or a military clash between Iran and Saudi Arabia. That's, uh, that's big stuff, because that's your oil. That would, uh, that would pump hot money back to New York.
stay there. And we know Saudi Arabia is a client state of the U.S., England, and Israel. We'll look at that geopolitical uh, potential and a lot more with Webster Tarpley as we chart the future.